Hello and welcome back to lesson three of Software Design and Development for National 5 Computing Science. Last time we were here, we made a simple program that takes in two numbers, multiplies them together, gives an answer, and it works. But I realized when watching this back, there was one problem. This text, this code is far too small. So I'm going to show you how you fix that. On the left hand side, you've got the little cog wheel settings button on the left. And we've got different options. One of those is font size. I'm going to bang it up to the biggest it goes. This looks a bit better. Another thing I've realized is I don't need this sidebar. You don't need to see the name of the program that I've written. So let's just close that. So now we've got much more room to code and it should be far easier for any of you watching on mobile to read the code that I'm writing. Unfortunately, we can't change the size of the output, but the code is the most important part. So what we're going to do today, I'm thinking we should do some more maths, more arithmetic here. This is the second bullet point. There's one thing we didn't do last time, and that was exponentiation. And I think we should do a couple of examples of programs that use maths as well. Practice is the best way to get better at programming. It, there's no point watching a video once and thinking you've learned how to do it. You've got to practice. So first off, let's learn about exponentiation. What does that fancy word mean? It just means power numbers. You ever done two to the power of two, two squared? Yeah, that's four. You ever done two to the power of three? That's two times two times two. That's exponentiation. So let's do that. How do we do exponentiation in Python? It's very simple. Multiplication is a single asterisk. Exponentiation, double asterisk. So what this will do is it'll take num1 and it will raise it to the power of num2. Let's run this and see what happens. So for num1, I'm going to type in 2. For num2, I'm going to type in 2 as well. So this should give us 4 because 2 squared is 4. Let's run it again. What is 4 to the power of 2? It should be 16. There we are. Now you'll notice it's giving us a point 0 at the end. That's because num1 is taken in as a float. If you remember from lesson 2, when you take in a float and you use that in a multiplication, the, or any sort of um, arithmetic, the output, the result is going to be a float as well. Also remember that you should refer to them as a real when it comes to an exam, a real number. You don't want to use the word float. This is just what Python calls it. So to make this look neater, if I'm dealing with whole numbers, I'm not going to let it be a float. I'm just going to call it an int. So this will fix that. Let's do one more. What is 2 to the power of 3? Should be 8. Boom, there we go. The answer is 8. Beautiful. Now, Python's amazing. Wait, you see this. Python can do extremely large calculations, extremely large numbers. Look at that. That's not a big number. But if we raise it to the power of 64, this is going to be incredibly large. And look how fast it did that. That is incredible. I cannot believe how fast Python is. Not all programming languages are, are this good at doing massive number crunching like this, but Python's brilliant at it. So since Python's so good at doing maths, let's do a couple of programs. Let's say you've got a part-time job and you want to figure out how much money you've earned from that part-time job. Well, the calculation is quite simple. You take the number of hours you've worked, multiply it by the hourly rate, that's your answer. Let's give that a go. Now, I've started a new program here. There's one thing I want to talk about before we start writing the code, and that is internal commentary. Internal commentary is essential when you're writing big programs. It's also essential when you're writing programs for your coursework or any work that's going to be marked by a teacher or by the SQA because it can tell the teacher that you really understand what the code's doing. It can tell the SQA who wrote the program, when it was written, and when you get into becoming a software developer, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I used to be a software developer, and we used to write internal commentary because a couple of months down the line, Maybe a year later, after you've written a program, that program needs to be fixed if any bugs have been found, or maybe the person who bought it wants new features added. So you're going to have to go back and change that. Well, if you go back to a program that you wrote a year ago, you may have forgotten everything that that program does, or what the code inside it does. So you go back to the code, read the internal commentary, and it tells you exactly what the code's doing. It's very handy, and it's essential. So how do we write internal commentary in Python? It's very easy. You just use the hash key and then you can write anything that you want and Python will completely ignore it. It's purely there as a little note for you. Now this comment is useless, but what might be useful is to say who it was written by and maybe when it was written. It's the 29th of April, 2020, COVID time. And I also recommend writing what your program's going to do. A program to calculate the earnings for the week. All right, it's a very vague description, but that's all we need at the top of the program. 
When we're calculating our weekly earnings, we need to know how many hours we've worked and how much we get paid per hour, the hourly rate. So first off, hours worked. Now, when you are doing your hours for the week, quite often that could be a decimal number, like I could do 7.5 hours. A standard working week for a lot of people is 37.5 hours, 37 and a half hours. What data type would that be? Well, it's not an int because that's only whole numbers. It would be a float. Remember, a real number, a float. We get that as an input from the keyboard and we ask the user, enter, oh, using quotations, enter the hours worked. And I'm going to do a colon with a space for neatness. Next up, we need the hourly rate. Again, you could get paid five and a half pounds. You could get paid six pounds, 73. My first job, I was paid three pounds and 12 pence per hour. That was a long time ago. So that is also a float. Input from the keyboard, enter your hourly rate. Now you may notice when we run this, that this message isn't perfect, but I'll explain that when we get there. Next up, we need the total. And that is calculated by doing the hours worked, multiplied by the hourly rate. Then we just need to display the answer to the user. Print, you have earned plus the string version of the total. It's a string version because we can only add strings together. We can't add a string and a number and total is gonna be a number. So if we run this, what happens? It's asking for the hours worked. Let's say I've done seven and a half hours this week. It's asking for my hourly rate. Let's say I get paid five pounds 25. That's a good wage. Now what's gonna happen when I press enter? There's an error. What is the error? Now here's a common mistake that I've seen people do hundreds and hundreds of times. They'll see an error and they'll say, oh no, something's happened and they'll mess about with the code. They won't look at the error message. They'll just mess about with the code and then run it again without thinking. That is a terrible practice to get into. Always read your error messages. Now, let me show you that again. £5.25. What is the error message? It says, could not convert string to float. So it's given us this here as well. This is the string. Look at that. It's inside quotations. Why is that a string? Because the pound sign, I added a pound sign when it was expecting a float. Now, a float is just a decimal number. No characters, no special characters, no letters, nothing. So this pound sign does not belong. Let's try it again. Now, the reason I entered a pound sign is because the message doesn't include a pound sign. So I think, oh, I earned five pounds 25. So I put the pound sign there myself, but that's a bad idea. So we've got the answer, but we could improve this little message here. Look at this, enter your hourly rate. Well, if this is a British program, everyone's gonna be getting paid in pounds. So we just put the pound sign in the message here. And likewise, they're gonna be earning pounds. So this is a top tip. Whenever you're asking someone to enter a unit, a number of units, for example, it could be centimeters, could be kilograms, could be miles, could be time, could be seconds, minutes, hours, whatever. Include the units in the prompt. In this case, it's pounds. Same with the output. Put the units in the output. So now when I run this, this is gonna look far better. Enter the hours worked, so that's 7.5. I'm not typing H either <laughs> for hours. Hourly rate, 5.25, and there we have. 39.375. Beautiful. There's a couple of things we could do to fix this, how it's got like a half penny as well, but we're not ready for that yet. We'll get to that later. Now you'll all know full well that this is not how much money you earn. If you're on £5.25 and you did seven and a half hours, you don't get the full amount, not if you pay tax and national insurance. So let's figure out how much we would have earned if we were paying tax. Now we're not going to do any fancy business and say, oh, well, if we've earned up to a certain amount, we'll pay X amount of tax and so on. Let's just assume that everybody pays 20% tax. So what you have to do is take 20% away from the total. Now, I'm not a mathematician and I'm not a maths teacher, but I do know there are many ways of calculating percentages. I'll show you a couple of examples and I'll show you my favorite way. So let's say we have the total. If we were to figure out the tax, we could say that the tax is equal to the total divided by 100 times the percentage that we are taking off. Then we can say the total equals whatever the total used to be minus the tax, and this should work. So if we've done 10 hours and we get paid 10 pounds an hour, that should be 100 pounds, but take off tax, it should be 80 pounds. Perfect, what a beast. Now, personally, I don't like this method of calculating 20% and then taking it away. What I prefer to do is multiply it 
by 0 0.2. It does exactly the same thing, but in a different way. I think this is a bit more intuitive. It is to me anyway. So if we run it and we've done 10 hours and get paid 10 pounds per hour, it should be the same answer. Perfect. But personally, I think this looks better in my mind. You can calculate percentages in any way you like, as long as you know that it works. And in fact, this method allows us to do this whole calculation in one go. Let's fix this. Let's say that the total equals whatever the total was multiplied by 0 0.8. Because that is the total, but we're taking away 20%. So again, just another way of doing the exact same calculation, but I'm just saving a little bit of time. And to my eyes, this looks more intuitive that we're taking off 20%. I don't know if it works for you, but it does for me. But again, programs are brilliant in that you can do them in any way. There are many ways to get the correct answer. Do what you think is best. And that wraps up for lesson three. We've covered exponentiation. We've learned a wee bit about comments and we've had a little practice with a little example here. Try thinking up your own examples, give it a practice. Again, getting good at coding is all about practice, practice, practice. Right, have fun, I'll see you next time.